sometimes in economics we ask ourselves very important questions like what is the average income that all Americans make in the United States? And it would be useful to gather data on every single entity that we're trying to study, but it's nearly impossible often and also very expensive. And that's why it's really important to understand the distinction between a population and a sample. So what is a population? A population is the entire set of something that you're trying to study. So we're going to say this whole circle here is our population. And a population is often, like we said, hard to study. That's why we study samples. A sample is a subset of that population that is representative of the attributes of the elements within that population. So we're going to denote that as our sample. So what is an example of a population versus a sample? What we can think of is, say we're trying to study the average GPA of all students in the US. It would be easy to just say, OK, let's go and grab every single student, figure out their GPA, sum all of them up and then calculate the average GPA. But doing that for every single student in the US is probably pretty difficult. So what we do is we utilize a sample. So just to graphically represent a population versus sample, again, our population, which is right here, population is the entire set of students in the US. And then the sample, sample would be the subset of students that we would want to study to understand the rest of the population. So what we would do is we would, we would grab a subset or a collection of students, understand their GPA, and then draw conclusions about the GPA of the entire population of students. So when we're analyzing samples to understand their respective populations, we're often dealing with data, tons of data. And so it's important to make a distinction between data that refers to a sample and data that refers to a population. And we're going to introduce three characteristics of data that we're going to be revisiting throughout the course and that are building blocks for not only econometrics, but also probability and statistics. And these are average, standard error, and variance. So let's go back to what a sample and what a population are. So once again, the population is the entire set of something you're trying to study, and the sample is a subset of it that is representative of the entire population. So let's see how these relate to the three characteristics that we just talked about. So let's write sample here. Sample and population. All right, so we're going to just talk about the notation right now. In subsequent videos, we're going to understand what these three things really mean, but we're going to visit, visit the notation right now just to get it down and to start wrestling with the concepts in your head. So how do we represent average in the context of a sample. Say we're dealing with a population and a sample of x. What would be the sample average of x? That would just be x bar. Now the average for a population would be mu of x. Now when we're talking about the standard error, the standard error of a sample would be 
s of x, and the standard error or standard deviation of a population is sigma of x. Finally, the variance of a sample is typically defined as s of x squared, and the variance of a population is sigma squared of x. Notice that the variance is simply the standard error squared, but we care to make this distinction because it comes in handy when you're dealing with computations. So that was population versus sample. My name is David Campos, and this is Introduction to Econometrics.